Hello, this is Kevin Jones coming to you with Constructed Accumulated Knowledge from Kerwin's Game Store in Catskill, New York. Constructed Accumulated Knowledge is a new video series that we've been trying up here at Kerwin's Game Store. And the, the goal is to give you an insight into, uh, basically in, into my mind with the, the deck that I'm using or the deck that one of the other content producers is using. And um, so basically, some of you know me because I've been doing pretty well this year. Uh, I was fortunate enough to play in three consecutive players' championships over the past three years on the SCG Tour, and uh, I was lucky enough to represent the U.S. at the World Magic Cup this past November. And part of um, what has been instrumental in me being able to do this, uh, being fortunate enough to be able to have these opportunities, is uh, <laughs> my modern deck, Grixis Delver. So the series that's, that you guys are going to be are checking out today is going to be uh, basically an insight into my modern Grixis Delver deck. We'll go over matchups. We'll go over uh, sideboarding, you know, sideboarding plans, and at the end of each each matchup, we'll get to see some gameplay. So hopefully, we get to see how some of the play patterns work against the most popular decks. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So uh, check it out, and thank you guys. Let's get to it. Welcome to part one of Constructed Accumulated Knowledge. We're, we'll be talking about modern Grixis Delver today. My name is Kevin Jones, and I'm coming to you from Kerwin's Game Store in Casco, New York. All right, so without much fur without further ado, we'll talk about the main deck choices for Modern Grixis Delver. This has been my go-to deck in Modern for quite a while now, at least six or seven months, I'd say. And uh, I've had some pretty good results, so we're gonna we're gonna go over why the deck is constructed the way it is. Um, so here we go. There's the first four of is Delver of Secrets, the namesake of the deck. This is a one, one blue for a one one. At the beginning of your upkeep, you can look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card. If an instant or sorcery is revealed this way, transform Delver of Secrets. And the other side is Insectile Aberration, a three two flyer for the same one mana that you paid. Um, Delver is great against any sort of uh, big mana or combo deck in modern, of which there are a few, notably Tron, Scapeshift, Ad Nauseum, decks like that. Delver's great at pressuring those decks because the the Grixis cards, the counter spells, and um, some of the other Grixis cards are are much um, much worse when you don't present a clock. The cards are pretty good at keeping you alive for a finite amount of time or delaying your your downfall. However, the clock is important so that you can close the game before you either run out of answers or they have um, you know inevitability because your deck can only do so much for so long. You really are a fair deck at heart. Now, moving on, here we have Serum Visions, which is pretty much goes without saying, is the, be the best cantrip available for Modern. Any blue players who need this type of effect, it helps with mulligans, helps you hit land drops, allows you to play a relatively low land count. Serum Visions does all those things pretty well. It's no ponder or preordain, but it's great at what it does. Uh, next four of here is we have Lightning Bolt, which obviously, probably the best removal spell in Modern, and on a short list of the best cards in Modern, Lightning Bolt is great for dealing with the occasional Planeswalker, for cl uh, closing the, it increases your closing speed dramatically, especially when combined with the next card we're going to talk about, which is Snapcaster Mage. And also, Lightning Bolt deals with a wide range of different threats and can help you when you are ahead, as well as help you catch up from behind. The, the mana efficiency on Lightning Bolt is staggeringly, it's staggeringly efficient and is, sell, is paralleled by almost nothing in Modern, as the three damage for the low price of one mana is a great rate. And then that brings us pretty smoothly into Snapcaster Mage, which is the probably the best card in the deck. And they call this Grixis Delver, but you could probably call it Grixis Snapcaster Mage, and it wouldn't be much of an exaggeration or really hyperbolic at all. Because Snapcaster Mage is basically the uh, defining card in archetypes like this. Decks that look like this but might have slightly different cards all have Snapcaster Mage in common as the backbone of their deck. Snapcaster Mage gives you um, an additional threat and some burn when you're closing the game out. It gives you redundancy on all your best spells. It allows you to play less of certain spells so that you can draw a high variation of things. And then Snapcaster Mage is the second copy of whatever you need it to be the most. So it, it, it allows you to have the redundancy in the best effects in each matchup without really giving you a terrible stress on your deck building and forcing you to play, you know, four Terminates or something like that. You Snapcaster Mage plus one Terminate is um, just as good most of the time, if not better. And uh, it, in accordance with that is uh, the last four of we have here. There's Thought Scour. Thought Scour is, is a great cantrip because it cycles, obviously. And it also fuels Delve, which helps with the, with the Tassigers that we have um, over here in the six-drop slot. And also helps fuel Snapcaster Mage. 
And one interesting thing about Thought Scour in a deck like this is that it allows you to it allows you to play uh, more one ofs, a lot similar to how Dig Through Time used to, in that you can play less copies of the cards, and Thought Scour will put them sometimes mill these these uh, sideboard cards or one ofs into your graveyard, and it'll allow you to it allow you to see them with a Snapcaster Mage, and again not have to fill your deck with as many copies of a certain card to get the desired effect. So Thought Scour works in tandem with Snapcast Range to do that, and also is great at um, you know replacing itself and giving you uh, fuel for the five five delve spells in the deck, and then the Snapcast Range, which are often kind of delve spells themselves in a way. And so now we're down to the three ups, of which there are two: Tassiger the Golden Fang, which is one of the best threats in Modern, and in this deck can come down pretty reliably on the second turn. It's it has Delve, which for those of you who don't know, which is probably few of you. Uh, it means you can exile a card from your graveyard to reduce the casting cost of it by one colorless mana. So a Thought Scour in combination with any other spell and a fetch land or two fetch lands will cast a Tassiger for you on turn two for one mana. And just one fetch land plus any other land plus a Thought Scour will cast a Tassiger for two mana on turn two. So the, the startling mana efficiency of one mana three twos in Delver and one mana four fives and Tassiger allows you to play two spells in one turn often, which is one of the ways that I like to approach formats the most. I really, really enjoy, um, you know, tackling formats with a, with a staggering amount of mana efficiency and Tassiger, Delver, and allow you to do that. And Thought Scour definitely helps, helps you do that. Uh, so then another three of here is the first purely reactive spell that we've seen in the deck so far. Everything else is either a cantrip or... Um, a proactive spell that can, you know, be good on offense as well as defense occasionally. But here, this is Spell Snare. Spell Snare is a three of. It's fluctuated from a four of in the deck's infancy to a two of at one point. Now back to a three of. It's been a three of more than it's been any other number throughout the deck's tenure. And I really like Spell Snare because it's good at combating some of the cards that are the best against your deck. Namely, Eidolon of the Great Revel from Burn. Or cards that make your spot removal bad from a deck like Affinity. And a great example of those is either Cranial Plating or Arcbound Ravager. Spellsnare is very good against some of the cards that are the best against you in the format. Another card that it hits that is a little bit more of a tangential application at this point. But that would be Voice of Resurgence. Voice of Resurgence is a green and a white for a 2-2. That, that gives you a token every time your opponent casts a spell during your turn. So because you have a lot of instants, leaving mana untapped is important. And Spell Snare is one of the best cards at combating voice so that your opponent's not getting a lot of tokens while you're playing your tricky instance and messing up their game plan. So yes, yeah, Spell Snare is great against most of the cards that are that are very good against the deck, and that's why it's very important to the game plan of the deck. Now we're down to the two ofs. The two ofs, while you may think that the cards that are that are in the deck in numbers of two or less are less important, that's not exactly true because a deck like this, with Thought Scour, with Seer Emissions, with Snapcaster for redundancy for both of the cantrips, and with the, the dearly departed Gitaxian Probe, which we have cut, as you can see, because it was banned about 36 hours ago, maybe 48 hours ago at this point, but I digress. But with, with all those cantrip effects, you're able to see a ton of cards. And as a result, a card like, uh, like Colligan's Command, that's a very powerful effect, and you want to draw one in most mi mid to long games, you can see that, you can see one without having to play the full four because of your cantrip effect. So you have two Colligan's Commands here, and at one point it was two Electrolyze and only one Colligan's Command. At that point there were um, there was another Young Pyromancer in the deck for a while, and before that there was a Vendillion Click, and the deck was more of a control deck with Delvers in it, and less of a an uh, ag aggressive, slanted, or tempo deck. And what the deck really does is switch roles incredibly well. And uh, the, the cards in the deck do allow you to be both good on offense and good on defense, and I generally gravitate toward decks that are able to, to play both roles of aggressive and controlling fairly well. It makes your deck really hard to sideboard against, and it makes your deck really hard to play against, as they don't often know what role they're supposed to assume at multiple times within the same game, even. And yeah, so two Colligan's Commands is the number at the moment, because we've gone down from three to two young pyromancers in the wake of the pro banning. And even before that, I really, really liked the third spell snare over the third pyromancer. And uh, the third pyromancer basically lost that fight as I had seen a lot of burn 
and you know some other matchups where I really like the spell snare. So with with the third the third spell snare over the third pyromancer, we were a little threat light in long games against mid range and control decks. And as a result, I wanted to go with two Colligan's commands over the electrolyze, over the second electrolyze, because while both of them do similar things against affinity, Colligan's and and infect for that matter, Colligan's command is slightly better in that it can get their best cards as well as their smaller cards and. The Shatter effect on Inkmoth Nexus is super important against Infect because they have a finite number of things that can prevent an outright destroy effect versus damage base removal. So that's why I like Colligan's Command a lot there. Um, also, we have two Terminate. Terminate is just a great rate. In the future, we might go down to one because of the printing of Fatal Push. But at the moment, we're going with two Terminate. Terminate destroys any creature for black and red. Uh, awesome rate, really efficient card. Great for doing exactly what it does, which often is kill um, Inkwall Nexus, Blighted Agent, other Tassigers, Tarmogoyf. Kills Tarmogoyf a lot. Um, so yeah, that's Terminate. The one downside to Terminate is the mana is a little bad. The mana, as we'll see when we get to the lands, the mana in this deck is already pretty intense in that your early turns are... Your, the plays on your early turns dictate exactly what lands you have to fetch pretty strictly. And there's not much room for error in that regard, so Terminate just puts a little bit more pressure on your mana, which is why I'm hesitant to play more than the two that we see here. Uh, the next two of is Young Pyromancer, which we briefly touched on earlier, but Young Pyromancer is great at cleaning up. It used to be a focal point of the deck when we had three probes and three Young Pyromancers. A lot of the time you would play Young Pyromancer on turn two, cast a taxing probe, make a token, untap with it, make two or three more tokens, and run away with the game. Now, the Young Pyromancer, we're going to play it much later on, in most games, you know, an average of one to three to three turns later than you would would um, in the previous configuration of the deck, because Young Pyromancer now is more susceptible to dying without ever having make a token, which is a frustrating thing, and you try to avoid that happening. So you generally play it when you have mana untapped to play some spells. the The best play pattern with Young Pyromancer involves playing Young Pyromancer on four mana, leaving up Spell Snare to protect it and casting Serum Visions, Thought Scour, or Lightning Bolt. If you don't, if you're not playing against a deck where Spell Snare is likely to protect Young Pyromancer, then just casting a Sorcery Speed spell like Thoughts, or like Serum Visions, and then casting an Instant Speed spell in response to them killing it, getting two tokens for your investment, and still generally replacing yourself, or replacing the cancers replacing themselves. So yeah, so two Young Pyromancer there, and the, I think the last two of we have to tackle is Mana Leak. Mana Leak is very efficient. Again, one of the blue counter target spell unless it's controller pays three. This card's great against the top half of the format. The your Valakut decks, your Ad Nauseum, uh, you know, any anything that's trying to, to get you with an expensive card. Uh, any control deck, you know, with Nahiri's or Cryptic Commands. This deck is this card's also great against mid-range. It's one of your best cards against something like Kalidus or Liliana of the Veil. Seed Rhino out of the Abzan decks. Uh, Lingering Souls if you really need to counter it in a pinch. You try to avoid those play patterns because they generally don't favor you as that'll allow them to go along better than you. But nonetheless, Mana Leak is a great, a great card in this deck and is especially good at combating the expensive threats that the top end of modern is. And one of your best cards against Tron too. When we went down to two Mana Leaks in the wake of the Linear Aggressive decks becoming extremely popular, and making reactive spells worse. Also, one of the reasons why the number's at two is because it went from four or three down to two in the advent of Bant Eldrazi and Merfolk, which were both punishing my mana pretty heavily, and I, I was I was left frustrated with multiple mana leaks in my hand against the Cavern of Souls decks. So I went down to two, and I haven't really looked back. You do occasionally lose to something like Ad Nauseam or Through the Breach and wish you had more mana leaks, but you have action in the sideboard to beat those type of things. And generally, you're okay where you are with um, with two mana leaks. So yeah, so down to the one ofs. The one ofs here are one collective brutality, which is a new Escalade spell from Eldritch Moon, relatively new, but yeah, uh, it's one of the best cards you have against Burn. It's also great against Infect, as it can get their pump spell and their creatures sometimes. And collective brutality is good again. Uh, the discard effect is very good against. Scapeshift or Through the Breach from the Red-Green decks. 
and a deck like Ad Nauseam that you would have a lot of trouble with otherwise. The, the interaction is nice, and flashing it back with Snapcaster Mage is nice because the matchups where it's very good, often you have multiple cards that do nothing. For example, Ad Nauseam, you can discard excess Terminates. Uh, against Burn, you can discard expensive things that you're never really going to get out of your hand anyway. Stuff like Dismember that you, that you, um, you know, you really can't cast for any sort of positive value at all. So Collective Brutality is great in that it allows you to cash cards that don't have an application at the current time in for valuable effects to keep you in the game or to uh, put you far ahead. And uh, also one, one tangential application is that it fuels Delve. And the second one on the sideboard is often brought in to fuel Delve too in certain occasions because you have five Delve spells and when they put a ton of pressure on your Delve spells, Collective Brutality is one of the best ways to get those cards into your graveyard. Uh, so yeah, so another one of is Electrolyze, which we touched on earlier. Great against Lingering Souls. That's really the main reason why it's there. Also awesome against Liliana the Veil because it pushes her loyalty and then replaces itself, which is important. Uh, we got one Dismember, which was an inclusion that my friend Harlan suggested uh, before the Players' Championship because we expected a ton of, not a ton of, but a fair amount of the Grixis Delver Mirror as I put one of my teammates in Jim Davis on it. Uh, Brad Carpenter, who I was testing with, was also on it. And there was uh, one to two more people who we thought might play it. So we played the Dismember to beat their Tassigers and Gurmag Anglers. And I was rather taken with the, the mana efficiency of the card. And I noticed that when you paid four life plus one mana to kill something, it was often the case that you would be taking at about four damage from that card anyway were you not killing it. So... I really liked the, the one mana cost on Dismember, and it was important in the mirror that it dodged Spell Snare in ways that Terminate never could. So yeah, so I really like the Dismember now. I've been playing it going forward. It's also great against Infect and uh, Tarmogoyf decks as well. Uh, yeah, so we got one Murderous Cut rounding out the removal suite, and the one Murderous Cut is fantastic, especially against Eidolon of the Great Revel, as it will get cards... Um, it will get the Eidolon of the Great Rebel without the 2 damage trigger, which is super important against Burn. Murderous Cut, also good against Affinity when they put pressure on you and you need to play two things in one turn. And good against Infect for similar reasons. Lastly, we have one Gurmag Angler, which is just an additional Tassiger, but not Legendary. A little bit better if they also have Tassigers in their deck. And again, pretty good against the Tarmogoyf decks because it can... You can do something like Lightning Bolt your Tarmogoyf, cast Gurmag Angler, delving away the instant, and then the Tarmogoyf dies because they only have Sorcery and Land or whatever. Um, so that's a, that's a cool little trick that you may or may not know with the deck. And then the last card in the of the non-lands is one Sleight of Hand. This is experimental here. I haven't been playing this card ever before uh, right now, actually. I need something to replace Gitaxian Probe, and on the safe side, before I go into... Uh, before we have Fatal Push and before I try something crazy like Cryptic Command, I'm just going to go with a cheap cantrip that helps you find lands and helps smooth out your draws. Not too much saying here in that it's like worse than Serum Visions and worse than Thought Scour and worse than Gitaxian Probe, but, you know, the, the last one is banned. So we're just going to go with try this sleight of hand as like a fifth, a fifth Serum Visions, basically. I don't love it, but we'll see how it goes. And then next we got to talk about the mana base. We just went over the uh, 40 non-land cards in the deck, so this brings us right to the uh, the land base here. And as you can see, we've got eight fetch lands, the best fetch lands for the deck being four Scarling Tarn and four Polluted Delta. You could play Bloodstained Mire, and I have in the past played, you know, one or what have you. Uh, but I really like the Tarns and the Deltas because they allow you to fetch Cantrip or... Uh, Tarn lets you fetch Lightning Bolt or... Blue mana for a cantrip against the aggressive decks to find more lands. And Polluted Delta lets you fetch blue mana for a cantrip or a Swamp for Tassiger, Cut, or Angler. And I just like being able to, to have uh, all of your lands have the option to fetch Basic Island for Serum Visions when you're unsure how much pressure is being put on your life total. So as a result of that, I really like all your fetches being blue. Uh, but if you were to play um, an extra land, you could play... A Bloodstained Mire, but I don't really know what to cut, so I would just stick with it the way it is at the moment. Uh, the Fetch Lands brings us to the Fetchable Lands <laughs> that you get with the Fetch Lands. Sorry, I'm not good at puns. But um, here we go with Steam Vents as a two of. One of the uh, best lands in the deck in that it casts Lightning Bolt and Seer Visions and Delver Secrets. Pretty important in your early game. 
We've got Watery Grave, which you often get when Tassiger is part of your game plan. You would fetch Watery Grave, cast Thought Scour, and then uh, untap and play Tassiger with your Watery Grave. So uh, one, one important thing to note, though, is that a lot of times you fetch, like, in reverse order. If you're not putting a ton of stress on your life total, like, for example, if you want to play Tasker on turn two, you might play, you might fetch uh, Steam Vents end of turn, and then Thought Scour, untap, and fetch Watery Grave, and play Tasker, and that way you can also play Lightning Bolt. Um, but usually it's fine whichever way you do it. One thing to avoid, though, is we brings you to the fifth, the fifth shock land in the deck, which is Blood Crypt up here at the top. It's the Black Red Dual Land. Uh, again, all eight of your lands fetch Blood Crypt because half of them fetch Mountains and half of them fetch Swamps, so you obviously can fetch Blood Crypt here. Um, but one thing that people do when they haven't played the deck a lot is they fetch Blood Crypt and Island. And they're like, oh, I have all three colors. But, however, this prohibits you from being able to play a Black Spell and a Red Spell at the same time because your... It, it also cuts off, obviously cuts off any Black Red Spells like Terminate and Colligan's Command. But it also cuts off your ability to cast, like, Tassiger and Bolt at the same time because you have an island. Island is way better than the other basic lands in the deck. So, if you do fetch a basic land, you fetch island more than any other one. And you do fetch island a fair amount. But usually fetching Blood Crypt is wrong because it cuts you off too much. And you'd rather fetch island and then, like, Black Red, maybe, maybe island, Steam Vent, Watery Grave at your leisure, or Island, Blood Crypt, and then another land. But if you think you only have two lands, you're much better fetching Steam Vents and Watery Grave than Island and Blood Crypt. That's just really important to know. Island and Blood Crypt as your pattern is applicable and correct in one specific spot, and that spot would be you're being attacked by a Goblin Guide again, from a Burn Deck or a Monastery Swift Spear and don't want to take the damage, so you're going to Shock, which is... Uh, you know, a net zero when you would have taken the two damage anyway. You're going to shock, untap, thought scour, and play Tassiger. And want to minimize the amount of shocks you have to take. And the way that you would do that is likely with Blood Crypt Island. Although you could also do it with Steam Vents and Swamp. Although Island casts way more spells by itself than Swamp does. So if you have a basic land in play, you're much more likely to want to have Island than Swamp. Um, so moving on to some of the other... Lands in the deck that do that cannot be fetched. We obviously have a mountain and a swamp. Great when you want to cast Tasker or Lightning Bolt against decks that are pressuring your mana. Often you don't want to take a ton of damage against a Tarmogoyf deck, so you'll do something like Watery Grave Mountain, and that'll allow you to cast like uh, Terminate, and then you know Tasker plus Lightning Bolt or Spell Snare Leave Up Spell Snare plus Lightning Bolt, all sorts of things like that. Um, it's important to know that with young on your young Pyromancer draws, you don't want your only red source to also be a blue source because you usually want to cast a blue spell immediately after casting young Pyromancer. So it's nice to make sure that when you cast young Pyromancer, you have another blue source. And a lot of the games also, to take that a little bit further, you have Lightning Bolt and Thought Scour in your deck. So you want to cast young or in your hand and you want to cast young Pyromancer with a different land so that you can leave up a land that taps for both blue and red. There will be exceptions to the, you know, that prove the rule or whatever when you'll you'll have Murderous Cut in hand or something like that instead. And then that'll basically inform itself and you'll understand what you're supposed to do. It's pretty intuitive. But generally you want to stay uh, in your Young Pyromancer games. You want to stay in a play pattern that you have Steam Vents untapped when you cast them. And this just is a perfect segue into Spire Bluff Canal, which is like the third and fourth Steam Vents but they don't shock you. They're fast lands. This deck has wanted a red-blue fast land for a very long time, and decks like it have benefited greatly from the printing of this card in Kaladesh. Firewolf Canal is a fantastic addition to Grixis Delver, and I'm very happy that it was printed. Uh, it's great in the early game. It allows you to fetch Watery Grave and not have to worry about being shut off of red. Having your first two lands both tap for blue as well as another color is fantastic because it... Allows you to leave up one land and represent at least two spells. Like you can leave up Steam Vents and you're representing Lightning Bolt, Thought Scour, and Spell Snare all at the same time. And Dismember for that matter. Which is great. 
And that's generally the way you want to do it because a deck like this really punishes your opponent for playing around the wrong thing. Because it's so, so, so mana efficient and, and punishing against people not sequencing correctly against you. Because you can always recover from bad sequencing because a lot of your cards cost one. Whereas it's not as easy for your opponents to recover from bad sequencing because a lot of your cards cost one. Uh, so here's Dark Slick Shores, which is the 20th land in the deck at the moment. Uh, with the banning of Probe, I went up to 20 lands. So there was one Watery Grave before the Probe ban. And uh, when Ether Revolt comes out, I'll probably keep it at 20 lands. But I will probably trim the sleight of hand and maybe something else for two fatal push. We'll see though. But yeah, Dark Slick Shores is great because it lets you um, cast Tassiger when your life total is under pressure. It also taps for blue. It allows you to keep one landers that have Tassiger and Seer Visions in them. Because it, you know that like any land you draw, will you'll be able to do both things with the one land that you already have. So yeah, so... <clears throat> That's basically it for lands. Let's quickly move over to the sideboard, though. Hopefully we have enough, uh, enough information there on the main deck. It's a great and very versatile main deck, so I'm just going to slide the main deck away a little bit here so we can start to talk about the sideboard. Here's the sideboard. We've got 15 cards, and 15 cards in modern is unfortunately never enough. It, the format is so big and so wide that you really can't beat everything, but we're going to skim over the most practical applications for some of these cards here. First off, we'll look at the Graveyard Hate. we got two Surgical Extractions, which is one of the best cards against Dredge. We're down to two at the moment because we were at four, but Dredge is um, much, less, much less popular, I think, in the wake of the Grave Troll banning, whereas Dredge won't be hurt nearly as much as people would think it is. I do think that Infect will be hurt less than Dredge will, but I think that a lot less people will play Dredge and a lot, or less people will play Infect, but not as much. But anyway, I think that it's still right to play Surgical, probably between two and three. And it's also okay to deviate with your Graveyard Hate. Surgical's still good against Lantern. And we have something like Ravenous Trap, which is pretty good against um, Dredge and also good against a deck like Goryeo's Vengeance. Um, but yeah, the Ravenous Trap we're trying out as an additional Graveyard Hate here. We got two Dispel. Great against Burn, great against Infect, great against Mirror Matches. Generally, those are the applications for that. Oh, and Ad Nauseam as well. Also, you bring this in against any red-green deck that's playing uh, Summoner's Pact and Through the Breach. If they just have Summoner's Pact, it might not be worth it. But generally, you do it anyway because you have enough bad cards to take out that is worth it. But if they have Summoner's Pact and Through the Breach, you 100% should board in Dispel. Moving on down to... Uh, so, like, the thing about Grixis quickly here is that... You have a lot of one ofs. Your again, your your cantrips and the velocity of the deck facilitates playing a lot of one ofs. So we see a sideboard that's two dispel, two surgical extraction, and eleven one ofs. I love it. I've had friends that played Legacy and played fifteen one ofs in their sideboard, and it's just the perfect kind of insanity. It's great. Um, but yes, yeah, so here we got. We'll go in descending order of mana cost because. Um, <laughs> That's what my compulsions dictate I should do. So here's uh, Pia Kiran. Pia and Kiran Nalar is a 4 mana 2-2 two -two that makes 2-1-1 one -one Thopters and you can fling the Thopters at at your opponent, which is great. Uh, Pia was a recent inclusion. It used to be a Vandal Blast, but I've seen a much less Lantern lately and a lot of mid-range. And, and this card's great against the Grixis Control deck as well. So that's why I'm including this card. It's a Vandal Blast. It's an okay substitute for Banner Blast in that you can fling the tokens when you're locked under bridge against Lantern and still get some damage in. And also you can block Edge Champion with the tokens as well, which is super important too. So yeah, so this is my replacement for Vandal Blast at the moment. It's much more versatile than the card Vandal Blast. And after a lot of prompting from my friends, I finally cut Vandal Blast and they were happy with me. So yeah, so that's that's the that's the uh, Pia Kieran Nalar. Uh, going down, going down the list of Ravenous Trap doesn't really cost four; it costs zero. So we're just going to talk about that when we get down to the end. Although we already touched on it, we got Is It Staticaster here? Infect Affinity Elves, also good against other Young Pyromancer decks and Birds of Paradise decks, so like a Kiki Cord type deck, anything like that. Abzan Company, great card there. Uh, very good against. I like to board it in the mirror because I'm boarding out Delvers and like to take a controlling role, but not everybody does that. But I, I like I like Staticaster in the mirror. It's nice to have things that can answer Young Pyromancer, because in the mirror matches, the Young Pyromancer is your most um, 
frustrating opponent a lot of the time. It's the hardest thing to deal with in the mirror. But yeah, Static Caster is good for a lot of those reasons. We got a Painful Truths here. Painful Truths is the Converge spell. Uh, you know, each different co uh, color of mana you spend to cast it will... Uh, you draw X cards where X is the amount of mana you spend to cast Painful Truths. So Painful Truths is great. Again, you board this in against Grixis, Jund, uh, Abzan, any control deck, just, just some like Jeskai or Blue White. It's great even in the mid-range matchups where your life total is under some sort of pressure, but it's especially fantastic against something like Blue White Control where your life total is under no pressure at all. I also like it sometimes against something like uh, Sun and Moon where you would need to, like, the games are generally going to go long and you might need to hit your land drops uh, throughout the game as well. It's nice there. It's also nice to uh, work with Desolate Lighthouse in that it draws you cards and at some point you might, in the longest of games, run out of lands to fetch. So the Desolate Lighthouse is good because it allows you to... It allows you to discard excess lands and draw a steady stream of, of gas to, to you know, keep your deck going well into the long game. And that's one thing that's very good about Grixis is it can be aggressive early, but also pressure your opponent late. Rakdos Charm is additional graveyard removal plus additional artifact removal. It's a nice little overlap there that I like a lot. And you can weirdly get somebody with the damage effect. But, like, the only way I can think of that happening is, like, if you board it in against Sun and Moon... To get their chalices and then they kill you with Elspeth Sun's champion, but you draw this and kill them before they kill you. You can also redirect to Planeswalkers, which almost never matters, but is kind of funny. So yeah, that's Rakdos Charm. I haven't been on this card for a terribly long time, about a month, but I've generally liked it. Uh, Counter Squall is more the same in that it's pretty efficient, has a nice little added damage bonus on. It's worth the mana because usually the matchups where you're playing Counter Squall, your life total is not under a ton of pressure. The one exception is Burn. And even then, anything that stops their four damage burn spells or their Atarkas commands or whatever uh, it, it is, a welcome, is a welcome addition. Definitely any piece of interaction you can have against Burn, you're going to love. So you deal with the, the, the opportunity cost of the black mana. Whereas the matchups where it's good, it's very, very good. For example, Ad Nauseam, Scape Shift, or the Through the Breach decks. Um, a Jeskai control deck, something like that. Hitting Ancestral Vision with this when they need to stabilize is, is a great, great feeling. So yeah, that's uh, that's Counter Squall. Some of these cards are pretty intuitive. We got Engineered Explosives here, which might be the most flexible card in the entire 75 in that it can be brought in against anything from Lantern Control to Boggles to Affinity to Infect to Tarmogoyf decks. You can kill Blood Moon with it. You can kill Liliana the Veil with it. It's the one card that's a true and earnest catch-all. And I really like it for that reason. And it saw a huge spike in price because I think people are finally coming around to just how versatile and how great this card is. I think it's true. It's secretly, like, and quietly one of the defining cards of modern. And it's very tough for people to realize that at first glance. But yeah, Engineered Explosives, super, super uh, silent stalwart here in our sideboard rounding out a lot of the matchups and doing some things that almost no other cards in our deck can do. Uh, keep moving on here. We got one Magma Spray as a fifth Lightning Bolt effect when your life total is under a ton of pressure and you're playing against aggressive decks. I'll take out cards like Electrolyze and Dismember against Burn and board this in. Not necessarily because I want a Embarrassment of Riches with regards to removal, but just because I want to be able to do two things in one turn and the uh, card you draw from Electrolyze or the added toughness that you can kill with a card like Dismember is not nearly worth it when you're likely to die before you can get your spells out of your hand. So that's why a card like Magma Spray is great. I boarded in there as an additional removal spell a lot. And I also really like it against uh, Voice of Resurgence, Birds of Paradise decks, and it's like, very good there, obviously, because you're getting Kitchen Thinks. It's nice against Infect. I actually won a game at the Players' Championship against Andrew Jessup where my Magma Spray on his creature prevented him from being able to use Become Immense as a backup removal spell or backup protection spell because it exiled the creature that I killed instead of put it as his fifth card in his graveyard. So that was super interesting and relevant. That's a pretty narrow application, but it was really cool for it to work out that way. The last two cards we've got in the board are a Collective Brutality, which is good for the same reasons that the one in the main deck is. When you really need to interact with uh, powerful sorceries or an, an instance like Again, Ad Nauseam, Through the Breach. I can keep... sound like a broken record here, but, like, you really need interaction because a lot of your deck is just efficient counterspells and creature removal. 
And that's great when it's great, but when it's not good enough, it's important to have cards that do a multitude of different things. And for that reason, I really like Collective Brutality here as a sideboard card. It can supplement when the first one is good. Usually when you draw this card in matchups where you want it, it's very, very, very good. You'll discard excess cards, escalate it once, maybe twice. Against Burn, you always discard two expensive things, escalate it twice, kill their creature, take their best Burn spell, and gain two life. It's just a ridiculous, ridiculous card against Burn. So, yep, yeah, that brings us to the 15th card, the most untested card here. I thought that with the bannings, the um, Liliana the Last Hope here would be uh, a nice card for the mid-range matchups. Uh, people know what this does because it's great and standard. Uh, Liliana here is going to get back Snapcaster Mage a lot of the time. It'll kill a Dark Confidant sometimes. It'll pick off some Lingering Souls tokens. It presents an, excess re or an, an alternate win condition when you really, really need one. Although it's most likely to just like... Plus once, kill something, get back a Snapcaster, and then die. But that's still fine in mid-range matchups. I really like having something that's very unique with regards to the rest of your deck. I've never really played an effect like this before, and I'm looking forward to see how that is. And welcome back to Constructed Accumulated Knowledge. This is the third match in our league series. Unfortunately, our opponents got the better of us the previous two times. A close match against Burn. And a close match against Mono Black Control, which is interesting. Keep. Our hand is great this time. We have Spell Snare into Young Pyromancer. Tassiger, a bunch of fetch lands to support Tassiger. Probably gonna lead on Delta because with this hand, I'd rather get Basic Mountain. Merfolk? A Boral Palace in the Clouds? It's only played in like two things. I think it's Taking Turns and Merfolk. Could just be something weird. Maybe like an artifact deck of some sort. Oh, I put this tapped. This is possible we have Spell Snare, plus we want to leave up our own Spell Snare. Makes sense to do this this way. Could have spell snare, but we have two of them. We want to get one out of here. It's good. Okay, sure. Probably Merfolk then. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Get a mountain. Get both our young parliamentarians into play. It's definitely Merfolk now that we saw the Aether Vial. This is one way to beat Merfolk, which is kind of a tough matchup for Grixis Elver, actually, is to get out of control with Young Pyromancer, which, oh, that's good. I'm very happy that was not a Lord. Um, to try a spell here. Murderous Cut is a fine spell, I think. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, we're just gonna. I think we're gonna wait for the Lord to get Martyr's Cut. Hmm. And I think, yeah, I think that's fine. It's close, but I think it's fine.
possible that our opponent has so many two drops that they're going to cast the Lord off the mana because they haven't seen Spell Snare yet. That could be good for us. All, another Silver Girl lineup. All right. It's like their version of Young Pyromancer. It's fine. We're going to Murderous Cut something just to Murderous Cut something, though. I'll Spell Snare Phantasmal Image, too. It doesn't really matter to me. Oh, Cavern Souls is annoying. I might spell snare it just to get the two tokens. Freezer type is Merfolk, but it's not Kira, that's good. Ooh, Spreading Seas, perfect target for a spell snare. There we go. That's that's what we're talking about. Target that. Uh, I, target, oh, I should have targeted myself. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I clicked too fast. Terrible. All right. Oh, well. We still got plenty of graveyard fodder. Would have been better with the three more, but... Um... Good setup for our murderous cut next turn. Okay, so there's a white splash, so we gotta look out for Path to Exile and Rest in Peace out of the sideboard is what the blue white Merfolk deck usually plays. There's the Lord of Atlantis, that makes total sense. They kept it on two. Yep. Another Lord of Atlantis shirt. Fair enough. Two very unblockable merfolk. That's fine. Another Lord? That's annoying. Yeah! Uh oh! <laughs> Troublesome. Alright, need to draw some removal spells here. That's not great. We are very dead, I think. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I guess the best call is to just... Can't block with anything, so we're going to attack with everyone. Maybe <laughs> he'll block, and then we can damage on stuff and use Murderous Cut there to... Knock another, another loyal or another uh, power toughness off of one of the merfolk. <coughs> Gang blocks Tassiger and then blocks with another one. You could get him, but otherwise, I think we're probably just going to lose this race. We had too many lords. He did block. He did block Tassiger, which is good. Um, all right, yeah, just, I think we're still dead, yeah, we're still dead, um, if we had one more removal spell, we would have been able to get him, but we don't, he probably has let a, yet another lord, I think I respond to that with murderous cut on... Lord.
Grixis Delver is pretty good at blocking, and Merfolk pretty much prevents you from ever being able to block, especially if you're a blue deck, and that's why this matchup is pretty bad. But... <coughs> Let's see. It's possible he doesn't attack. If he does attack, and I have an, and I have another removal spell, he's in dire straits, so it's possible he doesn't attack. Uh, attacks with everything. Okay. Doesn't attack. I don't think you're supposed to attack with Master. I think I either have removal spell or I don't, and I'm dead. Boo. All right. Sideboard for Merfolk. P is probably fine. Staticaster is probably fine, but not. This is not the matchup for it. Um, Magnus Spray is great, and your explosives is great. Manalik is not great. Spellsnow is also not great. But they do have. They do have uh, some number of. Spreading Seas and even Spell Skite. So I usually keep in two Spell Snares. Also, Spell Snare, if they don't draw Cavern, is very, very good against the Lords. I'm going to trim a Delve Creature because they might have Rest in Peace in the sideboard. And they have Harbinger of the Tides, which is really annoying against the Delve Creatures. So that's 60. Uh... Yeah, I like that. Oh, I like Collective Brutality as well. And I don't like... I don't love Electrolyze. Um, close here. I think this sleight of hand is... Eh. That's good with Young Pyromancer. Um, Electrolyze can be good, but it's much worse against Curse Catcher than anything that costs less. I think I'm going to take Electrolyze out. Ugh. I don't love Collective Brutality against Curse Catcher either, but I think we can play two spells in one turn and make that work out a little bit better. I do like having Collective Brutality for Master of Waves, so that's great. I will keep this one. Young Pyromancer is one of the best cards here. It makes your removal spells actually good because you pressure them with them. Need to get on the board here in the win column. A little bit of frustrating day so far. The guy who killed me with Soren's Vengeance was the MVP of today. That was great. Five. Oh, whoa. I'm only at a four. Okay. <coughs> Just conceded? All right, well, that's great for recording a video. <laughs> All right. Um, eh, same plan, I think. I don't think I want Lighthouse. Lighthouse is good if the game slows down. I could see trimming, actually trimming a land for the lighthouse. Just because the games on the draw are a little bit more controlling. Um, I really like... Eh. I'll trim an island. They're pretty bad against the... Um, against all the lords. And I played the deck for a long time with only one grave, so I think that's fine. I think we'll trim that island for the or the grave for the lighthouse. Especially the islands that don't tap for red are pretty bad here. Is playing them is a little bit of a liability and you don't learn much from it. Or you don't gain much from it, rather. All right, opponent, please don't mulligan the four and concede this time. I really, really want to play magic. All right. Eh, this hand is not great, but I don't think it's a mulligan, unfortunately. There we go. We'll keep it. <clears throat> yeah. Gross. I gotta get Young Pyromancer out there. Oh, that was a good one. Uh, yeah, just do that. 
in case our opponent plays a lord, we have the option to kill it. We also can orchestrate this game so that we don't ever have an island in play, or at least we don't have an island in play for the first several turns. Another Aether Vial, that's fine. Morfolk can run out of uh, things to do with all their Aether Vials pretty quickly. I like that draw, and Static Caster could be good this game. We have enough removal to make sure we can get all the other lords out of there, and then we can Static Caster the remaining creatures. Particularly Curse Catcher. Phantasmal Image is a good thing to Static Caster as well. Uh, one other tangential application for Staticaster is that it is good against Kira. It gives you an ability to counter, which you can then use to huh. I'm gonna play this. Uh, be pretty obvious here and cast Lightning Bolt on Lord of Atlantis. They can vial in an answer, or they can vial in another Lord, but that won't save it. And Violin Curse Catcher, but I have mana untapped. So that worked great. Um, I think I'm supposed to attack. Yeah, I'm supposed to attack. Uh, Silver Gill Adept. I don't want to kill Silver Gill Adept here. I'm not going to attack just because of Silver Gill Adept. I think we can afford to wait. Hopefully that's Silver Gallant and I look great. That's another Lord. In that case, I'm going to get rid of it now. Get a token. I'll oh, cancel. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay. End step. Cast this. <laughs> oh, that's confusing. Okay. So hit my life total twice and then use the black for colors. Okay, got it. There we go. Phyrexian mana is very confusing in Magic Online. All right, that's pretty good. I'm gonna hesitate to crack this Scalding Tarn until I know what's going on. Put it up to three, that probably means he has our opponent has Kira, which isn't great, but again, the Static Caster will help with that, so any removal we draw will be good. Spreading seas on our mountain is fine. Now we can start cracking our fetches. That's cool. <coughs> Activate. Sure. I guess if they Phyrexian Revoker. Oh, it's non land though. Silver Light Up. That's great for us. Get cured. So we're allowed up to get hit with static caster. It's a much better thing for them to have than a uh, lord here. <coughs> Play another fetch, I think. A little too many lands, a little bit rough, but that's okay. Gotta go with that. Uh, was I supposed to respond? I think I'm supposed to respond. Oh, it's Rejury. Oh, that's good. They're going to block. And we're going to get to Static Caster the Adept. That's good. That is great. So possibly they don't block, I guess. I'll block with Rejury. That's even better. That is great. Oh, changed your mind. Oh, no. Boo. Vile took up to four, or no? The Vile takes up to four. Master of Ways is incoming, which is a tough card to beat, but. Did not, so. It's good, we just need to find an answer to this Rejury and our. Uh, another Rejury. Ugh. Our Static Caster will be good. Curse Catcher is fine. 
All right. Two cards in hand, sure. Yep. You may tap or untap target permanent. Okay. Target their land, yep. Vile, that's not great. All right. Another vile, yep. Another regery? <laughs> no! And, oh, I think we just lost. Uh, do they have all? Uh, yep, take 11. All right. So this would be a good time to draw explosives, <laughs> for sure. Yep. <coughs> And that's that. Boom. Dead. Thanks for watching part one of Constructed Accumulated Knowledge. So in part one, we saw the post-ban configuration for my modern Grixis Delver deck. We saw the 60 cards I chose, and we saw the 15 sideboard cards I chose. We went over some of the most um, common matchups and the sideboarding plans for those matchups. And at the end of the series, you got to see me get smashed around by by a Merfolk player, and uh, one of the one of the issues with the Merfolk matchup is that Cavern of Souls and Ether Vial are both very good at making your counter spells very bad. And generally, in matchups when your counter spells are good, the matchup is pretty good because the counter spells have a pretty good man efficiency to them, and as a result, you're able to uh, be able to steal you know multiple mana from your opponent over the course of multiple turns. And Merfolk. Between Cavern of Souls and Aether Vial takes away your access of mana efficiency to fight them on, and it ends pretty poorly for for the Grixis Delver player more often than not. I won, you know, maybe maybe two matchups against Merfolk ever, and I probably played against it ten times. So yeah, so not the greatest um, vote of confidence for the deck, but which is a little unfortunate. But fortunately for us, in part two, we will be able to update the deck with cards from Aether Revolt as the set will be released online shortly and is already released in real life. So we'll be seeing the addition of Fatal Push to my Modern Grixis Delver deck, which will help combat the Merfolk matchup if I'm fortunate enough to play it again, and it'll shore up some of the other other matchups as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to you know recording that, and I hope you guys are looking forward to watching it. Uh, I'll see you soon. This is Kevin Jones signing off from Kerman's Game Store.